Welcome to my continuing docu-series on the Fender Deluxe Tweed version. 1959 is the date of this particular amp, as I've covered in a previous video. I've decided to divide, divide up the section about the tubes in three parts. This one I'm going to talk about gray tubes. The next one will be house branded uh, tubes and changing the tubes. All this from a very engineering perspective. Uh, some history behind that and why this all came about and what influences there are on, with all these things. The house branded will help you understand what tubes are actually uh, original from the factory. Some background there. And then uh, changing the tubes while well, we change out the preamps. But today I'm going to discuss the gray tubes. I'm going to focus on this part of the schematic. This is where the tubes are in uh, push-pull service, the power tubes. So the question for today in this video is why use a gray tube in an audio amp? Is there a reason? Is there a purpose? Gray tubes were mostly produced during the 1950s and 1960s. The gray coating inside the glass envelope is a is graphite. It's, it's a RCA literature refers to it as a conductive coating. That's what it does. It conducts. But there's a reason for that. If you own this amp, by the way, so I was talking about in the last video about what tubes are original. Mm -hmm. This one happens to have tongue sole tubes. They were tongue sole was. Form, uh, founded in Newark, New Jersey, so it's not unreasonable, as we can see, to find a tongue sole uh, 66 GT tube in a 1959 Fender Deluxe. Notice up here, uh, the bright cap is still in this amp. They didn't disturb it. Thank you. Whoever owns this amp, keep this. And then over here, this is why, if you own this amp, I would like a picture of this. That is the worker mark. It's a piece of uh, masking tape with uh, someone's written their name on there. I, the one I'm working on, it has Lupe on that. I've seen another amp with Lily. I would like a picture of that, if you would, please. Please contact me. I'd like to know what that is. I'll publish it in a future video uh, if, we, if I get that picture. They did replace the ground cord and put a grounded cord in here. Everything else looks original. From what I can see out of this picture, I can still see some green paint on this uh, nut and bolt. Now then, Fender used tubes that were made in the USA. Sylvania, GE, Tongue Soul, Westinghouse, RCA. I've seen amps like this. I've never seen a Westinghouse install but I would, it wouldn't surprise me none. Again, as we just, I discussed in the previous video, even though the Soviet Union had their own version of the gray 6V6GT, you would not find it factory installed in a Fender Deluxe Tweed. It's not made in the USA. For all reasons previously discussed. This notice is a 6V6GT slash G. We'll get to that. So, you won't find a gray tube for a rectifier. There, are, there is no engineering basis to apply a graphite coating, conductive coating, inside a rectifier tube. There is a reason for coating the inside of a 6V6GT. GT is the operative uh, letters that we need to pay attention to. A 6L6 was extensively documented. It is actually for transmitters. The driver tube that drives the power tubes that are connected to the antenna. So the power tubes are delivering uh, one to two or more kilowatts. So you, the, rather than use a 12AX7, which is kind of tiny, you are using a 12AX7 to drive a 6L6, which is driving those monster tubes. The original 6V6 was a 2.5 watt tube. Now the 6V6. 
did that and they installed those in single ended amps and cheap radios and the B plus was around 250 volts. World War II ended and television became a booming market because during the war effort they developed these screens uh, that would help with them uh, with radar and tracking other airplanes, aircraft in the area and since they had that developed it next natural thing was television. Hi-Fi also took off it was a distant second and guitar amps were a fad item. Yeah we don't there's not an industry at that point it's like hula hoops, frisbees, yo-yos and guitar amps. It, it, it wasn't a thing. Uh, radio repair was a thing Television is becoming a thing because you can make money off of that through advertising. But guitar amp was—we don't know if it's even going to be around, so why bother? But in order to have a guitar amp do its thing, we needed—they needed more power. And with actually with TVs, they needed a bigger powered, uh, but cheap 6v6. And along came the 6v6 GT. A 6v6 is designed for class A2 operation, which means you drive the grid positive, and we drive the grid positive, it passes current. When it starts passing current, it creates some other problems. Uh, these are all 6v6 uh, tubes at the bottom. So over here, if you're in radio work, a 6v6 GT is great for frequencies down to 5 meters, but you still need a 6v6 uh, with a metal jacket, a metal envelope, which means lower wattage for radio work because you need it clean without spurious, spurious uh, emissions down to about two and a half meter radio frequency length. Just a little bit of background. So the metal tubes were not, were also not meant much for radio work. They can be, any of these can be work, uh, used in radios. Uh, transmitters would t prefer the metal tube. Uh, it's cleaner uh, for higher frequencies. Any of those can be used in a guitar amp, although metal tubes not so much. But the purpose of the metal tube is for radio work. This glass tube uh, we can actually put in for more wattage for radios and tube amps, guitar tube amps. The thing to look for here is this GT. You would not build a guitar amp with a 6V6. If you have a 6V6 GT and you put a 6V6 in, okay, but you've just brought it down from a 15 watt push-pull down to like 3 or 4 watts. And you're going, well, yeah, they're different. Very different. So a 6V6 GT. So the gray tubes were, you, were used in guitar amps because they were cheap, as cheap as a clear glass tube. There was a surplus of gray tubes, there's a surplus of clear tubes, mix and match, substitute. At that time they were as cheap as maybe a couple dollars more. But if you can't get a clear tube, you can get a gray tube, put it in, no problem, they operate exactly the same. So when tube radios and TVs became obsolete, there was no need to manufacture gray tubes. Oh, okay, first indicator here. The gray tubes were never intended for audio use. It's okay that you use them there, but they were intended for television and television applications and circuits. Because they found out, now uh, Alexander Schur mentioned in vacuum tube characteristics, 1958, page 86, that when the grid voltage is highly positive, you're overdriving the grid, it uh, causes uh, secondary emissions to form. They knew that it was well documented in 1958, which is why I put this up on screen, but they also knew that in 1940, because in 1940, television tubes were on the cusp of technology and through the war effort they matured for radar systems 
But during that time, when televisions became a thing and became uh, some, you know, something people wanted to put in their living rooms, uh, the graphite coating is for CRT. And so you'll see this uh, image here. Here's our vacuum tube manual from RCA RC20, 1960, page 10. You'll see something called conductive coating. What that is, is that graphite coating. Because there's uh, if you're getting the grid too hot and it's giving off secondary uh, emissions, it also messes with the vertical and the horizontal plates which guide the beam out from the back of the tube to the front and paints the phosphorus coating. Uh, you want it to be a good picture. You don't need it warped or uh, distorted. So in order to contain that, to get the phosphorescent uh, tube to uh, work well, they had to get uh, contain the secondary emissions so they're not bouncing over the place and interfering with stuff, so they would put in this conductive coating. That was that graphite coating is a shield. It, uh, since it does conduct, they then would connect that to ground and ground out that spurious emission. Now then, <clears throat> putting that coating in there, so in 1951, they talk a, a little bit of the breakthrough that Corning Glass Works um, announced that there's a way to get that coating in there uh, a little better. And the problem with that gra graphite coating is uh, graphite will give off oxygen. And when it gives off oxygen, it renders the tube useless. Uh, so they would bake the tube, once they applied it, into the inside of the glass tube, they would bake it off at 1500 degrees C to get, drive off most of the oxygen so it wouldn't poison the cathode. Um, it's there to su uh, suppress the secondary emission. I'm really kind of amazed that the gray tubes are actually still working because even a regular tube over a period of time still has trace uh, oxygen in the tube and the getter over time is still absorbing it. Uh, so I'm, a, I'm to borrow a line from the movie Jaws, uh, since you have all this graphite in the tube and even though you baked it, it still over time will give off oxygen and the, to borrow the phrase is I think we need a bigger getter. So if you have a gray tube, look at the silver coating up top. If it has gone white, the tube is expired and if it's a gray tube, it's mostly because of the gray uh, graphite coating inside the tube that has finally poisoned the tube to death. That's the reason I say, if you got one, use it. Even back in 1940, uh, vacuum tube design, what they noticed was, okay, so we go back in time, 66s, and now we need a 66 GT because we need a stronger tube for uh, television work and driving CRTs. And they go, when we start bringing that plate voltage up over 200 volts, the envelope charges it becomes positive with respect to the cathode. And then when they get up to 1600 volts, which is all related to CRT work, we're talking flyback uh, transformers in the back of the tube that are getting you up to the 1600 volts plus range, and that energizes that, that back, the CRT tube. But also, they just noticed that even in a 6 V6 uh, tube, the glass is charging, there's secondary emissions, and this is, even at 350 volts, it's significant. It's significant enough that they had to do something about that 6V6 tube. Now then, the 6L6 is also, you can find a gray tube, but the 6V6 GT was a workhorse for most vacuum tube televisions. The metal tube doesn't have that issue because it, it's, it's metal and it's already grounded. The other thing, uh, metal tubes were c kind of expensive, so you didn't want to do that. Use that for the high-end stuff, which is radios and radio transmitters. And the reason f they went 
from a metal tube to a glass tube is because in, in the future I'll, I'll do this uh, video because I'm, I'm still preparing it, but uh, the glass tube allows for radiant cooling of the plate of the anode. With a clear tube it can dissipate a lot of heat. So going from a, a metal tube 200 volts plate, maybe 250 volts plate, you could go to two, uh, 350, 375, almost 400 volts on the plate because you can dissipate the heat away from the plate and still run it at a comfortable 200 degrees F. Okay, don't touch the tube, but that's better than baking it to death. The 6V6GT is a vertical deflector amplifier. That's one of its principal uses. It's a push-pull amplifier, but it's used in the vertical def as a vertical deflection amplifier in TV applications, TV circuits. That's what it's designed for. 6V6GT is a 12-watt tube. A 6V6GTA is a 14-watt tube. So if you need a little bit uh, more amplification, they would go to a 6V6 GTA. You can use that for audio work as well, but that is the purpose of a 6V6 GT gray tube. I thought this was a cool find. You won't find uh, spec sheets on a 6V6 GT gray tube. All you get is a 6V6 GT tube. So the normal fix, in addition to this, you get the, all the other normal stuff, the plate curves, the current curves, uh, uh, operating conditions as it, when it's strapped as a trio versus uh, it's, you know, being multi-grid, depending on the manufacturers, whether you call it a pentode or a tetrode, okay? Uh, another subject for a future video. In the 1962 transmitting tubes, uh, page 5, it still mentions the fact that secondary uh, emission frequently is employed in multi-electrode tubes. That's a safe thing to call this thing. It's a multi-grid tube. and produces uh, effects that interfere with normal operation of power tube amplifiers. The reason for that is here we are in the 50s and 60s. Telev tube television sets are in their heyday. So I went out on the internet and found this picture and I thought someone has my dad's TV set from way back then. So here you have uh, vertical and uh, horizontal uh, adjustments for the TV, the RGB guns, these tubes, here's this gray tube, this is the flyback for the CRT tubes. Uh, when you turn off the TV, uh, the phosphor would, it would just go pew! down to this little point, makes it a little squiggly and finally go away. If you touch the screen, it was static electricity, it was a dust collector. But here's this gray tube, the vertical deflector amplifier. Here's a preamp, here are the push-pull tubes, uh, the 6S and 7 audio tubes. It's, uh, if you were to take this thing out and jettison the part of the circuit for the TV, drivers itself they need to have an audio amplifier here's the uh, the uh, speaker for the TV uh, you didn't need a lot 5 to 10 watts is all you really needed for a television set because it, the picture quality wasn't all that good so you were sitting around a room very close so you had plenty of volume with this speaker and this uh, circuit but it's a 350 volt tube the 66 class starts to approach the uh, volt a uh, gate the plate voltage at 350 volts and it starts giving off the uh, secondary emission. So we don't want this interfering with the cathode ray tube. So this has to be shielded in a way to do that. You have a graphite coating inside the back of the CRT. You have a, a gray coating inside this vertical amplifier. So why use a gray tube in an audio amp? The gray tube is primarily designed for TV circuits and applications. The gray tube was primarily designed for those TV circuits and applications. It's physically and electrically equivalent with a 6V6 GT clear glass envelope. That's the reason the documentation is the same. The gray tube just has a coating that's grounded out and, this, and the clear tube does not. 
the gray tube will run hotter because you have shielded the the plate the anode from radiant cooling so it has to cool it has to transmit heat to the uh, the gray coating to the glass to the outside so it severely limits cooling but it'll, it'll handle it when TVs went away the 6V 6GT gray tube did also if it were really a good audio tube it would still be around it's not it has no need there's no need for a gray tube in an audio amp so if you have it enjoy it and mostly for bragging rights Next up, I'm going to talk about house-branded tubes. Thank you for watching.